Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakak Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that rule and teach well. Shalom, Wakasadim, Rabarakim, peace, mercy, and blessings be unto all of us for All right, and Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, which means he exists or he is to be. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, and his name means he is to deliver or his salvation. All right, and this is the brother Mirar, all right, coming through with another lesson. And pretty much this is going to be on the, the, the wars and the rumors of wars. Because with the whole coronavirus, with the pretty much the whole world on lockdown, you know, different spots, different uh, spots of the world are, you know, are easing up on, 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 on the shutdown or lockdown. You know, with all this going on, we can't forget about the, the wars and, and the rumors of wars that, that was prophesied in, in the scriptures, man. All right, because World War Three is still going to take place. And and, and, and and the tension between these nations, they're heating up. So I just have a few articles. This first one is from BBC News. Uh, Lord willing, I remember, I'll leave the links in the description for you all. all right, it says, Iran warns U.S. Navy over Gulf incident. All right, the U.S. Navy said that the Iranian vessels approached at extremely close range and high speeds. <laughs> All right, so there's there's a lot of tension between these nations right now, especially between uh, in Iran and America. Iran's Islamic Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, has accused the U.S. of giving a Hollywood version of events over an incident in the Gulf this week, which I believe that you know Esau he always liked to control the narrative and put things in his favor when actually he's the bully. He's the one that's going around, you know, stealing all the natural resources of of, of, the, of the nations. All right, and so forth and so on. It says the U.S. state Iranian vessels had conducted harassing approaches of six of its ships on on Wednesday, but the IRGC said it had increased patrols in the Gulf after the U.S. Navy blocked the path of an Iranian ship earlier this month. Tensions rose after the U.S. killed an Iranian Iranian general in, in Iraq in January, which that's uh Qasim Soleimani. You know he was killed earlier this year. You know, the year started off with a, with, a, with a major bang when they killed this general. So you think they forgot about that? They ain't forget about that, man. They're, they're still angry, and, and they're still just waiting for the perfect opportunity to pay America back. All right? The IRGC statement said that the U.S. forces had blocked one of its ships in two separate incidents in early April using dangerous behavior while ignoring warnings. It added that Iran would, res would respond decis decisively to any miscalculation, all right? The incident on Wednesday came a day after armed men believed to have been IRGC personnel seized a Hong Kong flag tanker in the Gulf of Oman and redirected it to Iranian waters before releasing it. What did the U.S. say? The U.S. Navy accused Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps of dangerous and provocative actions against its vessels which were involved in the military exercise with the U.S. Apache attack helicopters in international waters. You see how Esau is, man? This motherfucker, he pretty much slaughtered, took down all the native tribes. Then he got the nerve to name his, his helicopters after different tribes. You know, which this Gadite on the movie, uh, This Is How It Ends, she brought that on, on this movie as well. You know, but it's the truth, you know? 11 IRGC Navy vessels repeatedly approached of six U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships at extremely close range and high speeds on Wednesday. The U.S. Navy said one passed within 10 yards, 9, nine meters, of a Coast Guard cutter. The U.S. crews issued multiple warnings via bridge-to-bridge -bridge radio, five short blasts from the ship's horns, and long-range acoustic noise from marker devices, but received no response from the IRGCN. After approximately one hour, the IRGCN vessels responded to the bridge to bridge radio queries, then maneuvered away from the U.S. ships in the open distance between them, it added. All right. The U.S. Navy said such dangerous and provocative actions increased the risk of miscalculation and, and collision and were not in accordance with the, with the international maritime conventions or customs. <laughs> All right. Uh, what happened in the Gulf? The relationship between the two countries has been fraught for decades, but tensions increased after the U.S. withdrew from a nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions on Tehran. 
Last year, Iranian forces seized a British flag tanker in retaliation for the seizure of an Iranian tanker by the British territory of Gib Gibraltar. Both vessels were eventually released. The U.S. also accused Iran of carrying out attacks on six tankers in the Gulf of Oman and launching missiles and drones at two oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. Iran denied any involvement. Animosity between the two countries rose further in January when the U.S. killed a top IRGC general in a drone strike in Iraq, which that's Qasim Soleimani. All right? Iran responded by launching missiles at Iraqi military bases hosting U.S. forces. See if I can find that. It says Qasim Soleimani was an, uh, an Iranian major general in his Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and from 1998 until his death in 2020, commander of a squad forces, a division primarily responsible for extraterritorial military and clandestine operations. You see, so this is the general they killed. So you think? They forgot that over there in the Middle East. No, nah, the tensions there, they're still, they're higher than ever, matter of fact. All right, and it's not just between the U.S. and Iran. All right, it's the U.S. and Russia as well. This is from Business Insider. Russia fighter jet executes unsafe intercept of U.S. Navy aircraft coming within 25 feet of an American plane. All right, and this is something that we have to remember. Russia is, will be a guard onto these smaller somewhat weaker nations such as Iran, you know, etc. All right, it says a Russian Su-35 fighter jet on Sunday conducted an unsafe intercept of U.S. Navy P-8A Poseidon surveillance aircraft operating over the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the U.S. Navy said the Russian fighter came within 25 feet of U.S. aircraft, seriously jeopardizing the safety of flight of both aircraft the Navy said. Sunday's intercept marked the second time in four days that a Russian fighter jet has conducted a dangerous intercept of a U.S. Navy plane. So, the, so there's tensions high over there, man. There's tension is high. It tells you that, uh, matter of fact, let's get some scriptures now. And it's lucky. I meant to turn off my notifications before I started, but just going to have to roll with it. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? So the tension between the nations, the rumors of wars, this is another sign of the second coming of Yahawashai, all right, and of the end of the world, because Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of the follow. So this is another sign that this man is about to go down as well. And Yahawashai answered and said unto them, Take heed. That no man deceive you. Yeah, you have to seek out the book of the Lord and read yourself. It says, Blessed is he that I read it. You know, you have to pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahshua yourself. You have to fast. You have to get yourself right. All right? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And that's why you have to try the Spirit by the Spirit. You know, this group teaching that you that the RFID chip is, is anything else but the, but the market. Of, if, if there's a groups out there that's teaching you anything else that... The, the RFID chip is not the mark of the beast. Hey, you need to take heed of them. All right, if they teach you to worship Jesus Christ and God, you need to take heed of them, man. You need to mark them. All right, like it tells you in Romans, mark them, man. All right, which cause offenses contrary to the doctrine. All right, verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And we're still hearing about that unto this day. Even though the coronavirus is all over the news, you know, you kind of got to dig for this sort of information. It's out there, man. All right? It's out there because it's prophecy. All right? Because there will be a third world's war. Because the Lord is strategically what he's doing. He's gathering these nations to the Middle East for the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Or Yahweh Shepat, Yahweh's judgment. All right? See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So you're going to have Iran versus the U.S. Russia versus the U.S. And there shall be famines, all right, which there's already uh, Smithfield's meat factories closing down, all right, and in some stores, the, the prices, they're price gouging the meat and the food, all right, you can't forget the locusts over there in Africa eating up all the crops, all right, that's going to cause a famine, and pestilence, 
the coronavirus is a pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places and every day there's earthquakes man there's earthquakes all over the world man all right let me get this one in uh mark this is mark 13 and verse 7 and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars be ye not troubled for such things must need be but the end shall not be yet so we need this to happen so that Esau can go down and our kingdom can rise up through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh, why Yahweh was shot. All right, so I want to get a little more of this article, then I'll close it. It says, uh, the Navy said in a press release that over roughly an, an hour and a half on Sunday, a Russian Su-35 fighter and twice intercepted a U.S. Navy P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol and re re reconnaissance aircraft operating in international airspace over the Mediterranean. While the first intercept was acceptable, the Navy considered the second unsafe and unprofessional. During a risky intercept, the Russian fighter executed a high-speed, high-power maneuver that decreased aircraft separation to within 25 feet. Directly in front of the P-8A exposed the U.S. aircraft to weak turbulence and jet exhaust. <laughs> the Navy said the P-8A descended to create space between it and the Russian fighter jet. The Navy accused the Russian pilot of seriously jeopardizing the safety of flight of both aircrafts. The service captured the incident on vehicle. So let me see if I can play this for you all. Okay, um, not much of a video, but it says Sunder's intercept followed a similar incident on Wednesday when a Russian Su-35 intercepted a P-8A over the Mediterranean conducted a high-speed inverted maneuver 25 feet directly in front of the mission aircraft. All right, uh, let's see. The Navy said the Russian aircraft's actions were irresponsible and accused Russia of putting our pilots and crew at risk. So what do you think this is going to lead to, man? In both cases, the Navy said the U.S. aircraft did not provoke the Russian fighters. Show more, pro this is Navy Chief of Information. <laughs> Show more professionalism. Fly with more regard for, for safety. All right? The life you, you save might be your own. All right? U.S. Naval Forces, Europe, Africa, U.S. Sixth Fleet, breaking another unsafe Russian intercept of the U.S. Uh, Navy P-8 and international airspace above the Mediterranean Sea. The Russian aircraft got within 25 feet of the P-8, putting both crews in harm's way. We expect nothing less than professional and safe interactions. All right, the U.S. is battling a serious coronavirus outbreak, but the U.S. adversaries continue to cause headaches for the military. Call a lawyer, how about Jimmy Oshai? All right, you know what this is leading to? World War Three. all right? This is Revelation 11. In verse 14, the second war is passed, and behold, the third war coming quickly. The third world war is coming quickly, man. And we can't forget about that. And right now, we're in the beginning of wars. This is 2nd Edward 16 and verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. All right? And the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? And we see that. We see with the food shortages in different parts of America, people hitting the food lines and the recreation centers and the food banks. So we're in the beginning of famine. You know, a lot of farmers ain't growing their crops because of flooding and, and, and weird weather patterns. Don't you know out there in Chicago right now, they're being blanketed with snow? It's almost May, man. It's damn near the end of April and they're getting heavy snowfall. So there's a lot of weird weather patterns and events going on right now, man. Because we're in the beginning of great death and the beginning of wars, all right? Civil wars, uh, tension within America, different states want to secede, sedition among men. People are going to start going against their, their government because they find out they've been lied to for their whole life, you know? So there's a lot of tension in the area. And these other nations, they ain't letting up off America, all right? It says the U.S. is battling a serious coronavirus outbreak, but U.S. adversaries continue to cause headaches for the military. Last week, the U.S. Navy had also an unpleasant run-in with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy. On Wednesday, 11 Iranian vessels conducted dangerous and harassing approaches 
against the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard vessels operating in the Persian Gulf, repeatedly crossing the bows and sterns of the U.S. ships and at one point coming within 10 yards of a U.S. vessel, the Navy said. All right, so for time's sake, you know, I'll just leave the links for you all. You know, they're both a good read. I'm just going to end it with this scripture. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. And that's dealing with the land of Russia right now. That land mass up there, man. And who inhabits that land this day? The Edomites. You know, because those Russians, they're Edomites, but they're a different stock of Esau. They don't have the same, uh, they don't act like Edomites in America, man. All right? They, 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 they're, not, they're not with that, that faggoty shit. All right? They're hardcore, man. They're hardcore Edomites. All right? And say, thus said the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, I'm against thee. Why? Because they're still Edomites, man. As is written in Ezekiel 35, prophesy against Mount Seir. All right? All Esau, man. Hey, but the Mosai is going to use Esau to take out other Edomites. O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth. I mean, the Lord's going to put a hardcore spirit of war in those rushes, man. All right, just like the Soviet Union days, he's going to put a hardcore spirit in them to go against America, man. All right? And all thine army, horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And when you go back to the Operation Paperclip, and the wise men of the T-men, the German scientists, it pretty much started with them, man. You know? It pretty much started with, with the German scientists. And a lot of them got split up between Russia and America. All right? So Russia could very well, well have advanced nuclear capability and military might than America, man. All right? Persia, which is Iran, which that name got changed into uh, 1935. Uh, let me see. Persia changed to Iran. Or Iran. In 1935, however, the Iranian government requested that all countries that which it had the diplomatic relations call the country by its Persian name, Iran. It thought that it was the Iranian ambassador to Germany who suggested this change. So when you read the scripture, Ezekiel 38, we see Persians talking about Iran. So Iran is with Russia, man. All right. Russia is going to back Iran up. Ethiopia and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet, meaning they're going to be armed to the teeth. They're going to be fully equipped, man. All right. Meaning, they're going to be, meaning these nations are ready for war. You know, they're tired of being bullied by America. Gomer and all his bands in the house of Togomar, Turkey, of the North Quarters, and all of his bands and many people with these. So it's going to be a lot of nations that are going to side with Russia, man. All right? Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself. All right? And they are prepared, man. All right? Thou and all thy company that assemble unto thee, and be thou a, a guard unto them, man. Hey, so it's only a matter of time where, where America keeps fucking with Iran. Hey, Russia's going to step in, man. And, and, and shit is going to get uh, a lot more worse out here. All right. But I'm going to close it with a Revelation 11. It says, Revelation 11 and 14. The second war is passed and behold, the third war coming, coming quickly. But hey, before that happens, the mark of the beast has to be implemented. And we see that fast approaching. Real quick, with that, I just want to do a quick update. I want to give all praises, all honor and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Shalom, walk peace, mercy, and blessings to the hopeful light. I pray this be edifying. Shalom.